Hi and welcome to this old house. If you're looking to add character to a stretch of hardwood floor, try insetting a field of classic herringbone parquet. It's a look that goes all the way back to the Palace of Versailles. It's probably not the easiest project you'll ever take on. You have to precisely align each slat, but the aesthetic payoff is worth it if you have the patience. There's a lot of prep work involved before you can start laying any flooring though. Start by finding the center of the room and marking it with a chalk line. To create a perfect rectangle for your herringbone field, you'll also need to mark a perpendicular line using a trammel. That's a tool you can make yourself with a long strip of wood. Drill a hole for a pencil near one end and drive a nail through the other. Set the nail point of the trammel on the center line and swing the pencil to draw an arc on either side of the line. Reset the trammel on the other end of the line and swing it again on either side of the line to cross your first set of arcs. Notice where the two set of arcs intersect. Use a straight edge to connect those points. Now you have two perpendicular lines to work off of to create the rectangular border you need for your parquet. With herringbone, the slats need to be a length that's an exact multiple of their width. To figure that out, dry fit various lengths in a zigzag pattern to find one that will end evenly at the sides of your border. Then set up a stop block on your miter saw and cut a test slat to length. Just make sure to cut off the end with a tongue. Double check your slat length against a group of other pieces. Make sure they're all pressed together tightly and check that the test slat is flush with the edges of the grouped pieces. If not, make another piece and try it again. Once your slat length is dialed in, cut all the slats you need, again making sure to chop off the ends with the tongue. In order to make a herringbone pattern, your flooring slats need to have a groove on each end. Luckily, you can add a groove on the ends you just cut with a router. First though, use a groove in one of your slats to adjust your router bit. Then clamp a slat to your workbench and run the router along the end to create the groove. And then groove the rest of the slats. Now it's time to lay out your working lines. You need a parallel line on either side of the center line to use as a guide as you lay each slat. To set their distance, use a rafter square to mark a 45 degree angle from the tip of one board. Then flip the square over and draw another line from the opposite corner to intersect the first line. Now you've got a capital T on your board. Make a line from the intersection of the T perpendicular out to the edge of the slat. Finally, from that point on the edge, draw a parallel line with the top of that T. This represents the center line that you already have on the floor. Lay the board on the floor with the last line you drew oriented right over the center line. Now mark the floor at each corner of the board at several intervals. Use a straight edge to connect these points and you've got your working lines. To give you a place to start, cut a right triangle of plywood with the short sides equal to your slat length. Screw it into the subfloor with a 90 degree point right on one of the working lines. Then fit one slat against the blank, tongue side out, with each of its corners on a working line. Place the second slat overlapping the end of the first. Now you're ready to start nailing. Place the flooring nailer against the boards and strike it with a mallet to drive nails through the tongues. With the first two slats installed, you can build the pattern from there. Keep overlapping the ends, making sure to stay on the working lines until you reach the far border. When you do, relocate the plywood blank to point in the opposite direction, aligned with the last slat you installed. Now lay another row of slats coming the other way, fitting into the tails of the first row. There's a trick to covering the areas left by the blanks. You can't nail into the grooves of a slat, so you have to reverse direction. To do that, use a flooring spline to butt two grooves together. Glue it in place, nail it, then you can build off of this new tongue. Once you get all the herringbone installed, you need to trim your edges square. Mark off the areas where the slats overlap the border. Then set the depth of your circular saw just a hair more than the thickness of the slats. Attach a guide to the subfloor and use the saw to trim the slats. Once they're all trimmed, you can route a groove around the entire perimeter and attach long splines on all four sides. Now you can add a decorative accent strip before finishing the frame around the herringbone with wider pieces. If you used pre-finished flooring like we did, all you need to do now is stand back and marvel.